Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com, and this is Center Seat, my Star Trek podcast. Happy Star Trek Day 2021. Woo! 55 years, celebrating 55 years of Star Trek. Uh, 55 years of which I have been around for um, 45 years of that, <laughs> approximately. <laughs> At least in terms of uh, about when, no, actually, maybe even more than that. Uh, I was going to say about when I um, discovered Trek, uh, but actually it was earlier than that. So it's probably closer to 50 years of, of, of my love for, uh, this, this concept, this series, the series of series that we have or have had, uh, over the last 55 years. And so, uh, just like many of you, I'm sure, uh, you gathered around, uh, your TVs or your mobile devices or uh, other other uh, devices uh, to watch the live stream that was put on uh, in the evening on September 8th, 2021. So uh, I happened to uh, be home right after work and noticed uh, on Twitter, I was checking Twitter and one of the uh, Star Trek focused accounts that I follow posted something about the uh, the live stream and so I clicked that link and uh, and basically started watching it from the beginning uh, and then I watched it pretty much uh, I sat in front of my computer pretty much the rest of the night uh, and turn well it was about three-ish hours I want to say it was a little bit more than three hours I believe all total but um, uh, but that was a good thing because uh, I thought it was going to be like last year's Star Trek day that I was at home for because I I, <laughs> I had injured myself and uh, was not feeling well. And so uh, I stayed home and watched the, the videos that they put out throughout the day. Uh, but this was a three-hour event live streamed and uh which is appropriate because it's it's a it's an you know an anniversary of sorts uh, a special you know it's 55 it's a nice you know, divisible by five <laughs> anniversary situation. But uh, regardless, uh, it was a lot of fun to see uh, all these people getting together, the actors, the the, the production folks, and uh, and various others celebrating Star Trek. And so I wanted to go through uh, the things that uh, I learned, uh, my reaction to some of this stuff. So here we go. We have always looked to the stars to discover who we are. To seek the unknown. That's why we're here. Because there's no such thing as the unknown. Only things temporarily hidden. There are moments that will test us. Be bold. Be brave. Be courageous. Let's see what's out there. We are explorers. We explore our lives day by day. Fascinating. 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 Intriguing. We're going to stumble, make mistakes. <laughs> uh, we got sci fi stuff happening over here. That's weird. Weird is part of the job. We get to do what we love. Woo! We're going again. We get to reach for the best in ourselves. We get to reach for each other. Mortality gives meaning to human life. Love, friendship, these are precious because we know they cannot endure. We all have a story. 
just waiting to be claimed. The past is written. But what we do now has the power to determine the future. I we will make that future bright. Wherever our mission takes us, we'll face our destinies with bravery and honor. The need to connect is at our core. It takes time and understanding. If things were easy... It wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> well, you still got a job to do. To keep saving the galaxy. Hell, set a course heading. Engage. Let's fly. So this is uh, this was hosted by Mika Burton, whom is uh, Lavar Burton's daughter. So uh, it's kind of neat that they are keeping it within the family, so to speak. And of course, um, my good friend, I, I wish, uh, Will Wheaton, uh, whom I enjoy watching, uh, do these kinds of things. So anyway, um, uh, a good, I don't know, about 25, maybe 30 minutes of the live stream was, uh, more or less the pre-show. And they had a couple other, uh, uh, young ladies who were interviewing various people involved with star trek uh as they were coming through the photo op line or whatever red carpet or whatever you want to call it anyway um i just want to note here that uh they they talked to lavar burton and gates mcfadden um and uh i really loved what uh, both of those actors had to say about what star trek meant to them and basically i'll just boil it down uh it's just it's about family and friends and and in and, and, uh gates mcfadden's case uh embracing the fans because she she talked about how she had uh trouble with that early on uh as she was involved with star trek and then they talked to george takei and uh he talked about the importance of star trek uh to him personally but then also to um you know the larger community so to speak and i just i i, I thought wow when did when did george takei become the ambassador of the original series <laughs> uh i i have no no problem with it uh because every time he talks about star trek uh it's with such love and reverence and uh respect and so i th i thought that was really cool but it's just i'm i'm so used to you know people focusing on william shatner or leonard nimoy when he was still with us uh and you know the the various producers and writers so so they kind of got the spotlight but now george Takei seems to be getting it and, you know and, and part of that is you know he's willing to to get out there and and do these things which so um kind of skipping ahead here but um they spotlighted each of the major shows during the course of this live stream and i found it interesting uh just as a a point of reference i guess that they or whom they got to represent those shows and of course george Takei was there to represent the original series and i'll talk about the others as a, as we go as i go along uh, so yeah, I was still in the pre-show, uh, as they launched the live show, there was a, a countdown. I can't remember what they counted down from 15, something like that <laughs> anyway. Uh, but, but as they counted down, they showed an image of, uh, the actors, the principal actors from, uh, the show, each, each show that they have, you know, TOS on up through, I believe lower decks. I don't, did they show prodigy? Now I can't remember. Is Lower Decks the most recent or is that Picard? <laughs> Some Star Trek fan I am. Anyway, uh, but it, the, this, as the, the countdown ended with a, uh, a montage of all of the, well, I shouldn't say all, like, like the captains, like the main, the, the leads, uh, uh, of the show, which I thought was really cool. Plus the music was really neat too. Interestingly, uh, Captain Pike was the most, was more prominent over Kirk and Picard in this image, which I thought, is that, 
are, what are they saying? Uh, is this, is, is this, uh, Paramount and CBS or, you know, whatever, are they, are they the same, aren't they the same thing now? Anyway, uh, are they, is it, is it just because the, the new Star Trek show, Strange New Worlds is going to be debuting soon? And so they're, they're putting that focus on them, uh, as opposed to say, uh, Picard or Kirk for that matter, because, you know, it, it's under Kirk's watch, so to speak, that that Star Trek became what Star Trek is 55 years later. So I just that the the focus on the various shows and the way that that they are there or the way that they're putting the importance on some things over others. I found that fascinating. So, like I said, Pike was more prominent over Kirk and Picard and poor Captain Archer was all the way in the back. <laughs> Um, I, I, uh, but, but Captain Burnham, which I, okay, I'll, I'll be quite honest. I have not seen Discovery season three, nor have I seen Lower Decks. So, uh, which I, but I will soon because, uh, with Strange New Worlds, because I'm very excited about that, uh, I am going to finally, uh, subscribe to Paramount Plus and be able to watch all the treks. So anyway, uh, Captain Burnham, which was a spoiler to me, <laughs> uh, loomed largest, even though she was in the, in placement, she was right behind Pike. Uh, and then it was Pike in terms of, like I said, prominence, largest picture to smaller pictures. Uh, then Kirk, then Janeway, uh, an image from her, uh, as the emergency command hologram, I believe is what they refer to that as the ECH, uh, from Star Trek prodigy and then Picard, then Picard. Just again, I find, I find this, the levels of importance here, whether intentional or not important or interesting at the very least. So, um, as I was watching the live stream after that, after that uh, countdown, then they, they introduced, uh, I think his name is Jeff Russo. He's the composer for Discovery and Picard. And they had this orchestra there and they played this wonderful, uh, medley of, uh, Star Trek themes. And it was just, it was, it was powerful. It was, it was beautiful. And it made me regret, uh, not, being able to be there in person to experience this thing. Ah, it was great. Um, if you, if you, uh, were not able to watch this and you're not a subscriber to Paramount Plus, check out Star Trek.com because that might be there. Cause I, as I was preparing my notes to do this, I, yesterday, I, uh, went and rewatched the live stream there because while the live stream was on the Paramount Plus YouTube channel, it's no longer available there. Uh, and I know they were they were constantly promoting Paramount Plus uh, for access to all this stuff. So um, uh, once I get Paramount Plus, uh, which will be in a few weeks, just because of you know uh, our budget, it works better for us to put that charge every month <laughs> into the budget uh, towards the end of the month, not the beginning of the month. So um, anyway. Uh, like you need to know that, right? <laughs> like, like you care. Uh, 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 but anyway, uh, if you get a chance, go watch, go watch that, that, uh, opening musical number. Uh, the orchestra played throughout the live stream. Uh, they, uh, when they spotlighted, uh, the each series, uh, they would play that theme. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool to, to listen to those themes played by a live orchestra. Um, I will, I will say, I, though, I felt bad for the orchestra, uh, who had to sit there on the stage the entire three plus hours, uh, while the actors and the others talked to each other. Um, <laughs> you know, I, you know, it just made, it makes sense because, you know, they were playing, like I said, throughout the evening, uh, uh, but you know, they had to sit there. <laughs> I would hate that. It, it kind of reminded me of when I would go to my kids' performances at school and my daughter, Brittany, would do her performance um, at some point in the night, but I had to sit through <laughs> all of the other kids' stuff that I don't care about. Um, and it kind of, I don't know why that reminded me of that, but okay. Anyway, uh, so there was a bunch of different panels, they called them. 
Um, and the very first thing, uh, Will Wheaton introduced Alex Kurtzman, uh, who uh, they did a little video interview and they showed that. Uh, so it was his Star Trek Day introduction. Like I said, go watch these things to, to get the full details. I'm just going to mention a few things that popped out for each of these panels that I, I thought was interesting, at least to me. So in his introduction, uh, uh, Will asked him about the uh, possibly other Star Trek shows in in the works. You know, can can they can he spoil? Uh, give us a little tidbit of information. Anyway, so he had mentioned uh, not he uh, not Will uh, Alex Kurtzman had mentioned. You know, yeah, there's a lot of conversation about Starfleet Academy, which I had I guess I had kind of heard about this, but I I had no idea that they were still uh, really considering producing it. So that was, that was new. That was interesting to me. And then they got into, they got into, uh, the, the, the very first thing, which was, uh, Star Trek Prodigy because that is premiering on October 18th. So just about a month away as I record this. Uh, and they showed the, the trailer to it, which, which was nice. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's aimed for a, uh, a younger audience. Uh, in fact, it, it was referred to at one point as the first Star Trek created for a younger audience. And I thought, hmm, really? What, what about, uh, the animated series? Uh, anyway, maybe. And, and by the way, there was no, there was no tribute to the animated series. There was no mention of the animated series, which I found, uh, unfortunate. So anyway. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's the, the, the trailer showed a bunch of kids who come across the starship and they go off on adventures with, uh, the, as I mentioned before, Captain Janeway as the emergency command hologram, I believe, I believe that's what she's referred to as, um, which is funny because, uh, I just watched in the last week before Star Trek day, I watched a, uh, an excerpt from, uh, a, a Voyager episode in which the doctor daydreams about being an ECH. And I had no idea because if you followed me along on the center seat episodes, uh, you know that uh, I have yet to watch all of Voyager. And so I'm, I'm, I, I've watched the first season. I started the second season. I need to get back to it, especially since all this Star Trek day, Star Trek wonderfulness is, is in the air, so to speak. So I got to get back to that. But uh, I had no idea that uh, they had played around with that idea. So I thought that, that was really cool. Uh, my granddaughter Madison happened to be watching uh, a little bit of the live stream with me. Uh, keep in mind, she's 15 years old and, uh, she, she watched that prodigy trailer and said she wants to watch it. And, uh, you know, I've, I have yet to, I mean, she's, she's my geeky girl. Um, she really likes comics and she likes, uh, you know, sci-fi, uh, shows, uh, sci- sci-fi and fantasy shows that I, that I happen to like to, um, but I've yet to get her into Star Trek. So maybe this is, this is the way. Uh, however, so, you know, I see the appeal of, of Prodigy, I, you know, I will watch it uh, as I can. Uh, but as, uh, someone, I think it was either in the live chat or it was on Twitter. I can't remember which one, but, uh, they made the joke. They made the quip that Star Trek now has its own version of the Clone Wars. So um, I can see that from a visual standpoint because it looks very much like the animation I've seen for Clone Wars, although I, I, I have yet to watch an episode of Clone, uh, the Clone Wars. Uh, but, you know, I, not having watched Clone Wars, I don't know. if is it Are they just talking about the visual aspects or does the tone of what we saw in the trailer match the tone of Clone Wars? I don't know. Uh, and then they brought on uh, uh, a pre-recorded uh, video of, of Sirach Lofton, who played Jake Sisko on Deep Space Nine, to do the Deep Space Nine tribute. So Deep Space Nine was the first one. Why was it the first one? Why not? Why not uh, one of the other shows? I don't know. It was it was weird the way they mixed it up because it was not in chronological order. So anyway, uh, uh, Sirach did did this wonderful video uh, celebrating how great the show uh, is. And before its time, in terms of the diversity it showed with the cast and the characters and the storytelling, and he specifically mentioned um, the serial style of storytelling, you know, back in the early to mid 90s, when the show was on, nobody was doing that. 
So because and Star Trek was famously famously, or maybe perhaps even infamously, uh, very episodic. You know, the, the next gen was like that. Uh, the original series, of course, was like that. Uh, Voyager, I think, was like that too, based on what I know. <laughs> I know they had, you know, multiple parts and they had, they had, you know, things that ran through, but, you know, so did Star Trek, the next generation. So anyway, then, then the orchestra played the Deep Space Nine theme, which was, which was very, very good, very, done very well. Then they, then they had this, the, the discovery panel, uh, and they had a few of the folks from there, but, um, none of the, like the major, I don't think they had any of the principal actors on there, right? Oh. Uh, now my memory's failing me. Anyway, there was uh, one of the executive producers was there for sure. Oh yeah, um, um, uh, the guy who plays the doctor on the show is there. I am f- I am blanking on his name. Wilson Wilson Cruz, right? Yeah, and then uh, two other young actors whom I do not know, uh, but they appear in season three. So I, uh, which by the way, uh. Because of the things that they were talking about, these two things, and uh, I apologize if I'm spoiling this for you now too, but uh, there was some talk about Saru having left at the end of season three, and uh, these two new characters, Adira and Gray, and something going on with them, and and uh, I don't know. I, I, I anyway, it was it, they were spoilery type things, I guess. I don't know. I'll, I guess I'll find out when, when I actually watch season three. You know, but that's my fault. You know, it's it's not it's not like they needed to keep all this information under wraps or anything. You know, I I did not. I haven't. You know, I haven't. I haven't made the commitment to watch this the that's that season yet. In fact, I haven't even recorded yet. At the time of this recording, uh, my thoughts on season two, which I did watch months and months and months ago. It just I'm busy, guys. Uh, anyway, so, uh, they did announce the season four premiere date, uh, and that will be in November, uh, November 18th. Oh, that's interesting. So they're going to debut Prodigy on 1018 and Discovery on 1118. Huh. I hadn't realized that before when I was going through my notes. Okay. Then they did the, the, the Star Trek Enterprise tribute. They brought on Anthony Montgomery, who played Travis Mayweather. Uh, and which it was funny because as he was walking, so as, as the, as the uh the, the commentator the the actor who's coming on to talk about uh their show uh the orchestra would play a bit of the theme song for that show only they didn't do that for enterprise um which mr montgomery made note of uh so instead of playing the um uh, the, the, the like i said the enterprise theme song th- th- the enterprise theme song they played a bit of archer's theme uh which i found out later because i didn't i didn't quite recognize it at first but uh but anyway he he made a joke about it that they didn't play uh his theme anyway uh he reminded us during the course of this uh this this monologue that uh enterprise was the show that was fun and that it showed humanity taking its first steps among the stars, which was the important part about what Enterprise was supposed to be about. Um, and that's what that was the promise that I was very interested in when they first announced the show. And uh, as I was watching it, I kept wanting to get that uh, feel, that sense of discovery and exploration. And they did it a little bit, but uh, unfortunately, I think under the reins of uh, the pro- executive producer at that time, um, Rick Berman, you know, they, they kind of fell back into the, the, the TNG episodic, uh, style of storytelling and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, 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 but you know what? I, I watched Enterprise all four years of Enterprise. And I, like I said, I yet to watch all of Voyager. So take that as you will. Uh, and then they got to, which to me was probably the best part of the whole thing. Besides the music, uh, and they had the strange new worlds panel, and they had uh, Anson Mount uh, come out there, and oh boy, oh yeah, um, uh, Rebecca Romaine, and hmm, oh yeah, Ethan Peck. <laughs> oh my God, memory folks, bad. All right. Anyway, um, Anson Mount may, made a point of about the, uh, he talked about the sets, uh, specifically the design aspects, trying to remain 
true to or at least uh, homaging the 60s design, but with a modern aesthetic, which is always an issue when doing Star Trek, uh, you know, a, C- a prequel to, to Star Trek. So I thought that, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see what that looks like really, because I've, you know, they did, they did show a trailer for the show and, um, it looks a lot more like JJ Abrams Star Trek than it does, um, sixties <laughs> produced Star Trek. So I, I don't know. Uh, Rebecca Romaine, uh, mentioned the awe that she felt every time she stepped onto the bridge of the Enterprise while they were filming. Uh, I could just imagine. I, I would, I would feel the same way if I were an actor doing this show. Uh, so uh, they also talked a lot about, uh, the episodic storytelling that they planned, they plan to, uh, focus on or, or utilize. And so I'm really curious how today's audience, who is used to the serialized storytelling that Deep Space Nine pioneered, uh, because we get a lot of that, you know, discoveries like that. Um, uh, Picard is like that. So, you know, whole season arcs of, of things that, uh, uh that are related, right? And, and, and I, I remember early on when they were talking about strange new worlds and how it would be more episodic as a counterpoint to discovery. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure why they want to do this. Uh, I mean, the, one of the executive producers did talk about it and, and it was essentially tying it to how Gene Ronberry and others were producing the original series and uh, how they were telling stories and, and what they were trying to get at with those stories and trying to get around the censors and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure if he was making uh, a direct connection between the original series and what they're doing, or just uh, just as an example, you know, they could do these kinds of stories. I think it's the, the latter as opposed to them trying to uh, couch, uh, uh, modern day issues uh, within science fiction. So we shall see, we shall see. And like I said, they showed the, 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 uh, the trailer or at least, uh, was it a trailer or a teaser video? No, it was, it was, uh, uh they did, uh, a, basically a teaser, each actor saying, I play blah, 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 you know, so, uh, uh, Mount came on and said, I play Captain Pike. Uh, Romaine, I play Una, uh, known as number one. And she also got, um, a last name. So it's Una Chin Riley. Uh, so that's, so they did that. But then, okay. So then besides the characters we know, and of course, Ethan, Ethan Peck is Spock, but then they, they, they introduced some new characters that was a total surprise to me, which was great. Uh, and very interesting because they are having some of the characters that we saw in the original series. So they recast those. And so now we are going to get a cadet Uhura on the bridge of the Enterprise, a, a nurse chapel working, uh, in, in sick bay along with Dr. Mabenka. So wow. So all these characters were on the Enterprise before Kirk Uhura. Uh, that's really cool. So, so I'm very interested to see how they connect those things, and, and which is really funny because there's there's uh, something I want to do on this particular show on Center Seat where I take a look at those early Star Trek episodes and trace the evolution of Starfleet and uh, the the crew of the Enterprise. And I, I was thinking about this, uh, like I said, and wondering about, you know, between where no man has gone before and the first, f- uh, f- regular filmed episode, which is the Corbomite maneuver, you know, what happened in, bet- in those intervening time? Because I, you know, the, the obviously the, the visual style is different, but then th- there are some different characters. There's a different doctor, the, you know, all this stuff is there, there's some changes they made, you know, from a production standpoint, you know, they decided to make some changes, but, but, you know, in universe, what is, what does that mean? And, and what are the connections? And so, uh, it was very interesting to see that or see them do this. And, 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 that, uh, like I said, me wondering about that evolution. So now I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, they also have some brand new characters. There is a, a Noonien Singh character. It's like, Hmm, that's interesting. Is she a descendant of Khan? Is she a contemporary of Khan? 
you know, what does that all mean? Uh, uh, there's a character, I think it was, his name was Hammer, uh, which I thought was Andorian based on the quick image that I saw, you know, it was bluish skinned with antenna. But then I found out later when I was <laughs> preparing my notes here, it's, uh, apparently it's an, uh, how do they say this? Uh, the Anar, which was shown on Enterprise. And this is the uh, related species to the Andorians that live on the same planet, I think, or nearby planet. I forget. Anyway, they are um, telepathic, I believe. So yeah, uh, they're they're they t- they're typically ice blind, I guess. And so uh, the actor who plays Hammer, I believe, is also legally blind. Uh, so they're you know they're they're bringing the real list or um, uh, real life aspects into the characters that they are portraying now. So I thought that was interesting. And then finally, there is uh, a Lieutenant Ortegas. Uh, I don't know what her role is on uh, the Enterprise at this point, but uh, I I found the actor's response to her being able to say that she plays uh, Lieutenant Ortegas on on uh, Strange New Worlds just to be really refreshing. It was just very honest in the moment uh, as she was like. I'm so I'm so glad I can say this now. So, anyway, uh, other thoughts. The I thought the uniforms are interesting. Uh, they're different than uh, what we saw when Captain Pike and the other members of the Enterprise crew appeared on Discovery. One of the things I didn't necessarily like about those 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 uh, uniforms was the way I don't know the they kind of fold over with that collar thing. Anyway. Uh, but what I, what my reaction to these new uniforms is they need collars or something because <laughs> they're, they're like, they're almost like pullover, uh, small V necks. You can see, uh, it, at least to me, it appeared that there were some black undershirts, but I, I feel like they, they do need, they need, they do need a, a collar or something coming up out of there. Uh, they also talked about the pos, you know, Ethan, Ethan Peck said something about, an emotional aspect to intimating that it was about Spock. Uh, there may be even be, there may even be a relationship uh, or relationships that are explored. But the whole thing about the, the, the more emotive Spock, which uh, I found very interesting because um, there's been a lot of fan speculation since the cage where we saw Spock smiling and being more, potentially emotional if depending on how you read that those scenes and uh even even into where no man has gone before spock is a little a little more jokey a little more emotive than he is shown later in the series so uh, that'll be interesting to see them uh, explore that so yeah i am i am very excited to watch strange new worlds and and uh, see how that all plays out and then we get to my favorite voyager <laughs> Where Garrett Wong, uh, who played Ensign Harry Kim, came out, uh, he talked about how Voyager was was one of the more diverse uh, Star Treks with uh, the various people that, uh, that play the characters, let alone having the first female captain. Uh, all the all of the aliens that they showed um, more, and he said, basically, more than any Star Trek series, there's a there's there's a place for you on the crew of the Voyager there, the, you know, Voyager was a home and it had a, it, you know, it, it was a family. So I thought that was kind of nice. I kind of feel that way about Star Trek generally. Um, then they talked about lower decks and, uh, I will say aside from strange new worlds, this is the, the new Trek that I am most excited to watch. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's, uh, it's an animated series that, uh, goes more for the comedy, uh, <laughs> about Trek than, perhaps the drama, but I don't know because I haven't seen it. That's just my general impression of it based on scenes I've seen and people talking about it online. So, you know, for me, will it be too jokey uh, for my taste? Uh, Will I love the Easter eggs that I'm sure are there? Uh, I mean, they even talked about those kinds of things. Uh, And the references to earlier treks. The, The one odd thing about the whole Lower Decks panel was they kept talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, it was like this big joke and they can't, they're not supposed to talk about it. And I, I have no context for that whatsoever. So if you know what they were talking about, uh, please let me know. 
because I'm I'm very interested. Was there was there a Sonic the Hedgehog like character on the show? Did they make a joke about? I don't I don't know I don't know. Should I care? Probably not. But they made a big deal about it. Um, and then finally, they did a uh, the original series tribute where George Takei, uh, Sulu, our Sulu, came out and uh, uh, you know did his spiel about the the original series. So, and you know, fifty five years later, still going. After that was the uh, Ronberry, Gene Ronberry tribute, uh, where they had George Takei, LeVar Burton, uh, Gates McFadden, and Rod Roddenberry, uh, Gene's son, who now uh, basically runs the Roddenberry um, empire. <laughs> uh, so they they were just kind of talking about the you know Gene's vision and uh, uh, the legacy of what he created along with, you know, all the other folks that were involved. But uh, there was one question near the end of this that Will Wheaton asked everybody, which was, why do you believe Gene's legacy slash philosophy, I don't, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, endures? And so um, <laughs> I think he started with uh, LeVar and then Gates and then George. And George kind of, he kind of goes on. Um, uh, he he talked for a while, and then and then Will's like, uh, "Hey Rod, you're off the hook. Um, the 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 producers are in my ear telling me that we're out of time." And Rod was not not having it. I mean, I I could almost see like this flash in his eyes, like, "Are you are you are you kidding me? I am Gene Sonny. You're not going to allow me to say something about my dad's legacy." <laughs> And he did, and we, he wasn't having it, so he just he just did it. I mean, he he said it real quick, and he started out. But but you know, basically, uh, it was hope for the future, uh, and 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 working together for a common cause, a co- the common good. You know, those those are uh, those are the reasons that uh, Gene's legacy endures. Uh, then they did uh, the the Next Generation tribute with Lavar Bur- Lavar Burton, Mister LaForge. And uh, I guess by them ending uh, the tributes with the next generation, like I said, you know, earlier, um, it kind of shows how much the next generation looms over all the other treks, at least so far, uh, perhaps. Ironically, however, I I felt the orchestra (laughs) did uh, the poorest job on this particular theme. Maybe it was just the audio uh, syncing. uh, I don't know what, but... Uh, when I was watching the video, it seemed like they were out of sync with each other, whereas they didn't before with the other themes. But all right, and then finally, uh, finally for Picard, Jerry Ryan, who uh, played Seven of Nine, uh, uh, or in Picard, and also obviously Voyager. Um, and I'm saying these names because uh, you know who the characters who these actors play, just in case you happen to come to this episode and you're new to Trek. Uh, anyway, so 709, uh, uh, she came out and told us that uh, Sir Patrick couldn't be there with them at that time, but she was there to introduce the new trailer for season two of Picard. And so uh, what we saw uh, in the first trailer was really interesting because Q is back. And so what does that mean? And what was the story going to be? And we get a little bit of that. And so apparently, based on what we saw in that new trailer, you know, the the trial of humanity introduced in Encounter at Farpoint, the, you know, the very first episode of The Next Generation, that trial never ended. And in fact, that's what Q said in All Good Things, the the season ender episode. The trial never ended. And so uh, they continue that theme. And apparently Q messes with time and uh, changes everything about the Federation. And it's up to Picard and his new crew to make things right. And, you know, whatever that means. So... (laughs) Um, I was very excited about, uh, the new season of Picard involving Q, even though they, Picard continually, this is my criticism of season one was that it, it, it relied too much on, uh, these, these previous touchstones 
of the series of the next gen. Uh, and the, the, apparently they're continuing that at least, at least in terms of, for example, uh, a time travel episode where they have to correct, uh, time. They did that in, you know, first contact the movie, uh, and in several episodes of, <laughs> you know, Star Trek over the years. Uh, so I don't know. It's, uh, it's are the, w- 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 am I just, uh, am I just reading in, into it too much? Uh, or are they really, is, is Picard failing because it's retreading too much of its past plots, even with these new characters, you know, why Sir Patrick, why <laughs> anyway, uh, season two debuts in February of 2022. So we have October, November, uh, lower decks continues. Um, and then February we get new Picard and, and then they came back after, after that little, uh, uh, Revelation about about uh, the the events shown in the new trailer, uh, and they said that Picard has already been renewed for season three. So yeah, there you have it. The, that's uh, those are my Star Trek Day 2021 thoughts. Um, I hope you had a great Star Trek Day as I did. Uh, I actually actually had uh, uh, my my Star Trek Day actually started off not so great because I I was told that. One of my coworkers uh, had been exposed to someone who was diagnosed with COVID. I had I had just been in a meeting uh, a few days prior with this person with this person for you know thirty to forty five minutes, and I'm like, oh great. <laughs> uh, but then she came back and said it was uh, she had tested negative, so you know, wonderful. And then my day goes on, and I got I get to see the Star Trek stuff, and there's something else that that occurred that uh, made made my day even better. So. Um, it was wonderful to, to experience that live with everyone else and, uh, you know, get excited about the new things coming and the revelations. So yeah, I am hyped about Star Trek, uh, perhaps more than I have been in a while. So can't wait to, to, to start that subscription (laughs) and gladly pay the six bucks a month. I think it is, uh, so I can watch all these Star Treks and, and just, you know, bathe in the glory (laughs) That is, that is Trek. So, you know, there you go. Um, all right. Uh, I will, I will, I will leave you here with, with all that, with all those swirling thoughts. And, uh, uh, I'm really curious, you know, if you viewed, uh, this Star Trek Day, uh, live stream, either live or, uh, after the fact, as I said, you could probably still go watch that video, uh, on StarTrek.com. If it's still there anyway, uh, but if you have thoughts about this, uh, think I'm wrong about anything, uh, anything at all, I would love to hear from you and you can email me at longboxreview at gmail.com and, uh, or you can leave comments below where this episode will be posted on longboxreview.com. So with that, I leave you live long and prosper and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for listening.